Hey guys, what's up? Aru. I don't know if it's just me, but Natland's pre-release teasers look a bit too happy and peaceful for my liking. It's like that one series that you watch that looks so happy and colorful, but after you watch it, you just want to sit in the corner and cry for the rest of your life. So in light of how colorful and fun the look of Natland's teasers are, I think it's my job to bring forth the darker aspects of all the lore that we have so far. From the possible past of Natland related to 4.8's events patch, and the dragon here possibly being the Dragon King Nibelung, the beginnings of Natland's lore with Murata and her children who left, despite the taboo in current day Natlan, to the possible meanings of war, death, and rebirth, and why it's so highlighted by not only the dragons themselves, but also from the travail teaser, the Genshin manga, and from the lore that we recently got. Now we need to preface that this is also just a theory based on what we've gotten from the previous patches, so like always, just treat it as a theory and have fun with it. Of course, timestamps will be down below if you're interested in a specific segment. Now, Let's get started. Starting with the Summertime Scales and Tales event in the fairy tale world of Simulanka. Since we're talking about the region of dragons, we might as well start with an actual dragon. Well, a fantasy dragon inside a fairy tale allegorical story, that is. The entirety of 4.8 Patch's event is centered around a giant footprint that leads to the depths of the fairy tale kingdom of Simulanka. Now, if you've read the Unfinished Reverie in all of its entirety, that city seems like a kingdom where water flows like rays of light. A likely place where the scarlet-eyed youth is from. But it also could be the ineffable city that once had a war, leaving it bannerless and shunning the words of divine messengers. And just like the Valurian people or Hydro Eidolons in 3.8, the ones we speak to in the Simulanka are origami animals, particularly hamsters. Now with some theoretical madness, these same origami might actually be reflective of Natland's people half-human and half-saurian. In the latest Nedland teaser, Need a Hand, we see humans with their saurian companions, but maybe it's more accurate to say that they're humans tapping into their saurian powers and manifesting them through their visions. Since we know that visions come from dragons, then maybe these vision holders in Nedland don't just get elemental powers, but also become part of a saurian. In this case, a part of the pyro dragon's sovereignty. We know from the Unfinished Reverie that the authority of the tribes was turned to them and that the Saurian was also freed. So maybe it depicts the connection between the tribe's visions and the pyro dragon itself. Not only that, we can also see some NPCs dressing as Saurians which matches the description of Natland's people and the hat of Ranjit in the Saurian event. Safe to say that they weren't just vision holders that he met. Now some creatures in the Simulanka could also be actual Saurians, like this flying red squirrel or this really tall giraffe, which doesn't really exist in Tefat from my knowledge. Another interesting thought is that some of the origami hamsters could be real people who are losing their color, which could mean that Natlan is losing something that belongs to their people. Color in this case could be visions, elemental power, authority, and even freedom, or life force as denizens of Natlan. Since we're talking about the land of war, life, death, and rebirth, this tells a lot considering Natlan is covered with multiple mixed element Saurians and multiple unique tribes as well as their past about oppression. But a lack of color can also mean the abyss, or forbidden knowledge, just like Sumeru's withering crisis all around the forest and desert regions. Natlan is also likely to have their own form of abyss called the Ancient Gloom or the Turbid Tide in previous lore. As for how this is likely to happen, then here's some possible dialogue from the people in the Summertide Kingdom of Simulanka. The hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to the world. These words mentioned by someone from the event reflect the hero and his companions in the Unfinished Reverie as well. Now, if this Simulanka kingdom reflects Natlan, then the dragon that seems to be found somewhere inside the city is likely the dragon King Nibelung after he uncovered the secrets of forbidden knowledge, which if you could remember, he used to fight Celestia with. And what do you know, the ineffable city city in the Unfinished Reverie was a city that was left after a war that included divine messengers and a now chained Saurian. So Nibelung could be what they found along with the ruins of the ancient civilization after the tyrant of the city went to search the depths. 
But if it's not Nibelung, the Dragon King, then it's probably a different dragon, more likely the Pyro Sovereign. Now this is a lot of speculation based on a single artifact set and a very small part of the previous lore, so let me gush a little. However, seeing as the name of the fantasy world is called Simulanka and that it has Nilu who cosplays as the goddess of flowers, it might also be the island fortress Lanka in Hindu epics. The island country of Lankapura was located amidst other island nations, sunken plateaus, and submerged mountains, of which seems to be the case here in the fantasy world of Simulanka, which could mean a simulated version of Lanka, the island country, or maybe the literal floating country, Celestia, a long time ago. This again goes right back to the past in the Unfinished Reverie with the ineffable city that's related to Natland's history. Something that excites me but also saddens me that we didn't get to see or know more of it before is the recurring concept that I've noticed since we got closer to Natland. And that's the concepts of stories and fairy tales as well as companionship and the concept of life, death, and rebirth. With all of this put together, Natland seems like it isn't just a region of war and dragons, but a region of change and unity and celebration. It also seems that Venti and Murata are also connected, as war or great change often comes with great tales and story, as well as freedom to actually want the change. Obviously, we'll get the classic Hoyo sad story related to the Archon, that is, if there still is an Archon. And we'll most likely find more clues about Natland's real situation once 4.8 comes out. And hopefully through another allegorical tale, likely made by the Witch of Hexen Zirkel, Nicole, that's likely true. The concept of change is highlighted in Natland's Mare Jivari and the Unfinished Reverie itself, a band of heroes sacrificing themselves to change the once black mountain into a sea of flames, and another band of heroes that was led by someone from a place called the Sacred Flames, possibly pointing to the Sea of Flames who then overthrew the tyrannical rule of a god king, and freeing the Saurian of Natland who was caged or maybe sealed away somewhere. I dare say that change is also highlighted in the Mare Javari, seemingly cycling between flames, ashes, and lava, and the change that Venti exhibits for Stanley or Hans Archibald in his story quest. Unity is also represented as heroes from all tribes and backgrounds come together to change and redefine the status quo of their kingdom. Not just fellow humans banding together, but also with Saurians that were likely enslaved or sealed away after a likely war that ended the Dragon Lords. I mean, how else would the Saurian be in chains if not for the result of a heavenly dragon war long ago? Change can also be attained if someone has the freedom to create it, a concept that is heavily highlighted in the latest artifact set. Lastly, celebration, which the many characters in Natland's lore and culture are known for since the Genshin manga a land of ceremonial battles, songs of triumph in honor of their archon, and the richness of their history through heroic tales and stories. Of course, any celebration isn't complete without wine, which if you've been following Natland's tiniest hints of lore is apparent and constant, regardless of the time frame. This is why I think it's sad that barely any, if not none of those stories, people and cultures can even leave Natland's borders. And the only ones who were able to leave their homeland didn't even inherit that culture. We already know that Vanessa and her tribe of nomads were from Natlan and that they are known as the children of Murata from Venti. Many of the concepts of Natlan I've mentioned before seems to have originated and are still being practiced to this day. But a different concept is of the possible taboo of leaving Natlan. So can only those from Natlan not leave? Is there a specific tribe out of the six that implements this? Or did the children of Murata become an example of why leaving Natlan is now a forbidden act? Bear in mind that we only heard of this information from Ranjit who, as a visitor of Natland, knows very little from the region and traditions itself. Now we do know from some NPCs like Lektor that Natland is grouped into different tribes with different rules. So maybe only some of the tribes have this rule of not leaving Natland. Even until today, we've yet to see an NPC that originates from Natland. So maybe the people of Natland really can't leave at all. As to what exactly is tying them to their region is still unknown. Vanessa's tribe, known as the Flame Touch Muratans, have been traveling for many generations, even though their tribe seems to be located in the very western region of Natlan, where volcanoes are located. A place that actually hasn't been revealed in the Natlan teasers as of recording this video. So maybe there's a reason why they left thousands of years ago. 
In The Unfinished Reverie, the scarlet-eyed youth came from the sacred flames. Flame-touched Monathans, on the other hand, like Vanessa, have red hair. But only Vanessa and a single child's eyes were revealed, green and golden yellow. So their relations to the hero youth who came from the sacred flames is still unknown. But the flame-touched tribe leaving Netland could likely have happened all the way to before even the Talking Sticks lore. One reason for not leaving Natlan could be tied to the visions they received, connecting them to the possible dragon authority. Maybe the people of Natlan lose all their draconic powers if they do, leaving only their sheer strength and prowess in battle, just like Vanessa and her tribe. Another possible reason could be from helping the Saurians in a time when Saurians were chained after losing to the heavenly principles which marked a change in the shape of the world order, leading us to Apep and Dainsleaf's words about war. Now the Dendro dragon Apep is also the dragon who introduced Nibelung to us. And interestingly, Sumeru is where the Velurian Mirage is and is close to where Apep is located. But maybe this is an entirely new summer island, one that is stored in a fairy tale book, likely made by the Hexen Circle member, Nicole. All of this again goes back to the concepts of Netland, which is war. But war isn't just a battle. It's a moment in time where change is imminent, regardless of who wins or loses. And in war, there will always be life, death, and rebirth. The fragile life that moves onward, death which comes at any time, and more importantly, the new generation of life that comes after. In war, there will always be heroic stories, but also bittersweet and tragic stories. Stories that bring life to the history of humans, and stories that educate the new era of the old world. But for Natlan, it seems like this old world story might be more of a warning of humanity's lessons rather than a fun story in a dream island. You know, with all this theory building up around Natlan, we might get more dragon lore than we actually expect. Given how little lore we currently have and can make sense of, the initial release is probably going to be chock full of Natlan lore. If that wasn't enough, we'll likely get deeper insights into the history of dragons. Saurians and bishops and dragons, all of them coexisting with humans and tribes in one region of which we would think is impossible considering the hatred of dragons against humans. I mean, we all remember what happened with the primordial one and the dragon lords, right? The hydro dragon Nouvellet has his reservation as well about the usurpers even though he's more diplomatic after Egeria's greatest show. Add to that the potential allegorical stories within the Summertide Scales and Tales event and the symbolic significance of Natland's concepts. And it's always fun to dive into these hidden narratives and see what Hoyo is cooking up for Natland too. Along with the cool connections to real world myths and overarching themes of change, unity, and celebration, only further enriching our understanding and excitement for this new region. But that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like and if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!